Elections Part 3 1998-2019 In the last episode we had seen how soon after the Atal Bihari Vajpayee led National Democratic Alliance government celebrated the first year in power in 1999 the All India Anna Dravida Munitra Kazgam that is AIADMK pulled the plug bringing the central government down in just 13 months The AIADMK chief Jayalalitha had been pressurizing the Vajpayee government to remove all criminal cases filed against her by the Tamil Nadu government However, when the central government refused to do so, the coalition partner withdrew support shortly after Vajpayee was asked to prove his majority in the parliament, which he lost by just one vote. Let us continue our journey on the Indian elections beginning with the election of 1999 in this episode. I am your host Vishwas Nimbalkar and you are watching the Unique Academy's YouTube channel. President K R Narayanan gave the main opposition Congress a chance to prove its majority but when the party failed he called for early elections on 26th April after the 1996 and 1998 the 1999 Lok Sabha election was the third parliamentary polls that were being held within 40 months the election was to be held in five phases from 5th September to 3rd October 1999 While Vajpayee was the caretaker prime minister the country got into war with the Pakistan in May after their army infiltrated into India and captured army post in Kargil the bloody Kargil war that lasted till July led to the death of at least 527 Indian soldiers though Pakistan had initially denied its role in the conflict calling it India's face off with the Kashmiri freedom fighters it later awarded its soldiers medals for Kargil war in admission of its involvement Pakistan had tried to use the US to intervene in the matter to stop the fighting and also help resolve the Kashmir issue. However, wary of the consequences of conflict between the two nuclear armed forces, the US asked Pakistan to withdraw its troops from the line of control. Vajpayee's firm stance on dealing with Pakistan and not giving in under the US pressure embodied his image as a fierce leader. The BJP was going into elections with a message of having dealt with strongly with Kashmir border crisis and with a more aggressive stance on defense and terror as well as neoliberal economic policies. Congress on the other hand maintained its pro-liberalization stand on disinvestment and economic policy. However, the real talking point on the election were the two faces on either side. Vajpayee for the BJP and Sonia Gandhi for the Congress. Sonia had entered the political space officially as Congress president in 1998 but she was fighting her first election in 1999. She decided to contest the elections from two seats, Bellary in Karnataka and Ameethi in Uttar Pradesh. While she was preparing for the electoral battle, Sonia was also facing an opposition from within the party where veteran leaders like Sharad Pawar, P. A. Sangma and Tariq Anwar questioned her right to become the prime minister if the party won owing to her foreign origins. The internal challenge was to such an extent that she offered her resignation as the party chief. However, the major chunk of the party sided with Sonia and the three rebels were expelled. The three rebel leaders later went down to form the Nationalist Congress Party. The Videshi barb at the Sonia was the ammunition that BJP needed to get an edge in the election. The Saffron Party portrayed fight between Swadeshi Vajpayee and Videshi Sonia. After the five phases of voting on 5th, 11th, 18th, 25th September and 3rd October the counting was to be held on 6th October as Vajpayee ji had predicted in his last speech in parliament before resigning as the prime minister in April 1999 the BJP made up for the one vote loss that it had suffered earlier in the year while proving the majority in the house the 1999 election results tilted in favor of over 20 party coalition that is NDA with BJP in the lead the counting of votes which began on 6th october gave the nda 298 seats while the congress and its allies back 136 seats of the nda coalition partners the bjp secured the maximum share of 182 seats while the number of seats that were B- that the bjp won in 1998 and 1999 elections remained the same the seat share of the party in various states differed the party which won 57 seats in uttar pradesh in 1998 back 29 seats in 1999 election and won 7 seats in karnataka as opposed to its 1998 tally of 30 in all the other states the party fared better than the previous elections despite having fielded a lesser number of candidates overall in both rajasthan and maharashtra the party won 11 and 9 seats respectively more than the previous election the congress on the other hand back 114 seats 27 less than its previous tally However, it gained 11 seats in Karnataka and made its foray back into Uttar Pradesh by winning 10 seats. It lost a major share of seats in Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and Rajasthan, winning 5, 10 and 9 seats and as against 22, 33 and 18 in the last election. 
द बहुजन समाजवादी पार्टी विच प्लेड अ क्रूशल रोल इन बीजेपी लूजिंग इट्स वोट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस अर्लियर इन द ईयर वन फोर्टीन सीट्स आउट ऑफ द टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इट कॉन्टेस्टेड ऑन द पार्टी हैड इम्प्रूव इट्स टैली फ्रॉम द लास्ट इलेक्शन वेर इट हैड बैक जस्ट फाइव सीट्स द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया वन फोर ऑफ द फिफ्टी फोर सीट्स इट्स कॉन्टेस्टेड ऑन वाइल द कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी ऑफ इंडिया मार्क्स इज बैक थर्टी थ्री ऑफ द सेवेंटी टू सीट्स इट कॉन्टेस्टेड ऑन द जनता दल यूनाइटेड वन ट्वेंटी वन सीट्स वाइल द जनता दल सेक्युलर बैक जस्ट वन सीट दो कांग्रेस फेल टू क्रिएट अ डेंट इन बीजेपी लेट एनडीएज इमेज सोनिया वॉन फ्रॉम बोथ द बेलारी एंड अमेठी सीट दैट शी कॉन्टेस्टेड ऑन हवेवर शी चोज टू रिप्रेजेंट अमेठी द एनडीए विथ टू नाइंटी एट सीट्स केम बैक टू पावर डिफीटिंग कांग्रेस एंड इट्स अलाइज विच बैक वन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी सिक्स सीट्स वाजपेयी वॉज इलेक्टेड एज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर द थर्ड टाइम एंड टू कोथ विथ हिज कलीग्स ऑन थर्टीन अक्टूबर नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइन विद दैट Having served at the center from 1999 to 2004 the Bharatiya Janata Party led National Democratic Alliance became the first non-congress government to have completed its full term in Lok Sabha as as prime minister atal bihari vajpayee took a series of economic reforms which led to an increase in the country's gross domestic product that is gdp a rise in foreign invest, investment modernization of infrastructure in country more jobs and the growth of it industry had changed india's image for good It was with this image in mind that the BJP felt that it had a strong footing and would win the elections if they were called in early. It is believed that Vajpayee was not convinced to call snap polls but he gave in to the advice of his consultants who felt that BJP would come back strongly. Wins in assembly elections held in key states in 2003 had also given the BJP the confidence of come back at the center. The Vajpayee government hence in February recommended early elections 6 months ahead of the scheduled polls in October excluding confidence the NDA government took to the people an India shining campaign which it believed reflected the feeling of optimism and progress that the people had due to the decisions taken over the last 5 years the campaign which was intended to project a positive image of India among the international community even had a mention in the NDA government's budget however the manner in which it was rolled out many called it bjp's marketing campaign where vajpayee was being projected as a brand the criticism though was rubbish by bjp which claimed that the country regarded vajpayee as a symbol of progress while the government used india shining to convince voters to uh, convince them to their work the last 5 years the bjp designated another campaign to get close and personal with the electorate vajpayee remained the face of india shining campaign but the then deputy prime minister lk adwani started his rath yatra called the bharat uday yatra adwani undertook 8500 km long bus journey which would be completed in 33 days though the tide was in favor of the nda the congress was trying its best to better the dismal performance that it had in the previous election the party was pulling out all its trump cards in uh, trump cards to defeat the bjp and come back to For the first time Congress chief Sonia Gandhi's son Rahul Gandhi entered electoral politics and was named as the party candidate from Amethi Lok Sabha seat. Sonia Gandhi's daughter Priyanka Gandhi Wadra who was a big crowd puller owing to her owing to the stark similarities that she had in her look and demeanor with her grandmother Indira Gandhi was also closely involved in the party's election campaign. While the BJP claimed that it had created a strong stronger economy with a millions of new jobs Congress rejected the NDA government's assertion and argued that there was no improvement in the lives of the poor people While BJP's campaign focused on political stability peace with Pakistan better situation in Kashmir increasing international status it failed to touch the nerves of the people who were battling with the poverty issue Though there were good crop harvest which would have helped the farmers the government by announcing an early elections could not announce the scheme it had planned for the agriculture sector The Congress caught this missing link in BJP's star-studded campaign and showcased how it cared for the poor and how there was no improvement in the lives of the landless people or those living in the slums under the NDA government The BJP's plans of early poll suffered the first jolt when the election commission announced the voting dates in April at least 75 days after the government's recommendation for early election. The extra time that election commission took to finalize the poll schedule gave the Congress enough leeway to switch stitch pre-poll alliances to have a strong footing in the electoral race. The elections begin beginning on 20th April was to be held in five phases over 3 weeks till May 10 to facilitate the movement of electoral officials and security workers. 
though the election commission had used the electronic voting machine previously in some assembly elections it was the first time that the poll body was using them instead of ballot papers for the lok sabha elections nearly 1 million electronic voting machines were deployed across the 543 constituencies in the country to record the votes the exit polls had predicted had been predicting bjp's win in elections when the snap polls were announced but as the voting date got closer the tide seemed to have been turning against the saffron party the worst fears of the bjp led nda came true when the counting of the evms was held on may 13 the bjp managed to secure just 138 seats as against 182 seats that it had won in last election at least five members of vajpay cabinet including the foreign minister and the education minister could not win their seats the bjp suffered big losses in uttar pradesh and bihar where it bagged just 10 and 5 seats as opposed to 1999 and tally of 29 and 23 seats respectively it also lost six crucial seats in the then chief minister narendra modi's gujarat where godra riots had been held in 2002 it made some gains in karnataka and rajasthan where it won 18 and 21 seats respectively its allies to fail to impress and nda secured just 185 seats in 543 members house though no single party gained a clear majority it was a comeback for congress one that they themselves had least expected the sheet share of the party though did not see a surge as it had achieved in the past its coalition united progressive alliance had enough numbers to come to the power congress emerged as the largest party with 145 seats in its kitty it doubled its number of seats from 6 to 12 in gujarat won 9 in haryana 10 seats in tamil nadu 6 out of 7 seats in delhi and 6 in jharkhand too the support of the alliance partners and other regional parties made congress cross the magic figure of 272 The UPA backed 214 seats while 138 seats more seats were won by other parties and independents. Both the communist parties achieved their best ever electoral results and delivered it to the Congress. The Communist Party of India backed 10 seats, 6 more than the last election. The Communist Party of India Marxist too saw a rise in their seats. The party won 43 seats, 10 more than it won in 1999. The Nationalist Congress Party which was formed after opposing Sonia's claim on the PM post bagged 9 seats of the 32 it contested on. The Bahujan Samajwadi Party too kept down its upward curve and won 19 seats five more than the last election. Even before full election results were announced BJP considered defeat and Vajpayee ji resigned. With 185 MPs the NDA said that they would take the opposition benches in the parliament. The buzz was now about whether Sonia would be the fourth member of the Nehru Gandhi dynasty to become the prime minister of the country. However, the issue of her Italian origins had come back to haunt her. Though she had met then president APJ Abdul Kalam, days after the results were announced, she did not claim stake to form the government. On May 18th, she gave up her claim to the PM post. She said, "I quote, the post of prime minister has not been my aim." I was always certain that if ever I found myself in a position I am in today I would follow my inner voice I humbly declined the post she said announcing her decision one which left the newly elected congress mp shouting and pleading with sonia to reconsider her stance the other two top contenders then were for the post were former finance minister pranab mukherjee and manmohan singh on may 19th party announced that manmohan singh would lead the country as the 14th prime minister of india He stated that the country had voted for Sonia Gandhi but as she was declining the post he would take up the mantle for the work under the madam's guidance and within with the support of the nation That was all about the 2004 elections let us now see how the political parties fared in 2009 election When the then Congress president Sonia Gandhi turned down the post of prime minister in 2004 former finance minister Manmohan Singh humbly took the mantle to lead the UPA alliance government Though Singh who is credited for the liberalization of Indian economy had never won a Lok Sabha election he was widely re- respected for his clean image in politics Singh led the UPA government from 2004 to the completion of the 14th Lok Sabha in 2009 During his tenure as the prime minister the Indian economy continued to remain on the upward curve even touched its highest GDP growth rate in 2007 Several projects taken up by his predecessor Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji government in the previous term like Golden Quadrilateral and the Highway Modernization Program were taken forward by the UPA government too. He also continued the peace process that with Pakistan that Vajpayee ji had initiated. 
One of the biggest takeaways from the term was the signing of the nuclear cooperation agreement with the United States under which India would gain access to US civil nuclear technology and fuel. On the other hand, India agreed to place its civil nuclear facilities under International Atomic Energy Agency's safeguards. As the Lok Sabha term was nearing completion in 2009, the election commission seemed to have been split over the poll dates. This was the only election which was held under two chief election commissioners. While the first phase was held under N. Gopal Swami on 20th April 2009, the remaining four phases were held under his successor Navin Chawla. The coalitions that were formed before the 2004 election continued for 2009 election too. While the Congress steered the UPA and the Bhartiya Janata Party led the NDA, projecting itself as a secular party, the Congress said in its agenda that the party has been the bulk work against four isms that threaten, the, threaten to tear our country apart. Communalism of all kinds, linguistic chauvinism, regional parkalism and casteism. It argued that it had it has an inclusive vision as against the BJP's narrow and communal nationalism which it claimed denied equality and equal rights to large sections of our people. It had also called the third front to be a grouping of opportunistic parties which neither have consistency nor clarity. They have neither competence nor commitment. This front grounded in the politics of convenience is nothing but a platform for the personal ambitions, the Congress manifest said it. It also brought to the people the achievements of the UPA government in the last five years. Congress said it had fulfilled the promise that it had made in 2004, like the creation of more jobs, economic growth, primary education, brought legislations like Right to Information Act 2005, enacted National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, launched National Rural Health Mission. There were speculations that then Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi will be the PM candidature candidature of the Congress or of the UPA after the Singh went underwent a heart surgery. However, quelling all rumors, Sonia announced that Singh will, Manmohan Singh Ji will be the will yet again be the face of UPA. On the other hand, former Prime Minister Vajpayee Ji was no longer the NDS Prime Minister candidate for 2009 election. After the NDS defeat in 2004 election, Vajpayee in 2005 had announced that he would not contest the next parliamentary election. The NDA had announced BJP veteran LK Advani as its PM face in early 2009 in view of lifelong service to the nation, vast political and parliamentary experience and unpeakable record of integrity. The BJP hit out at Singh's LA government alleging that the government mismanaged the economy. Advani promised that the persons earning less than 3 lakh a year and those over the age of 60 will be exempt from paying income tax if the BJP comes to power. The election was taking place just months after the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks in which at least 170 people were killed and more than 300 injured. Hence the BJP targeted the incumbent government for not taking enough counter-terrorism measures. The BJP vowed to have a tougher law to enhance the security of the country. In a direct face-off expected between UPA and NDA for the 15th Lok Sabha, pollsters had predicted a hung SM hung parliament with neither of the coalitions in the position to win a majority. When the results were announced in May, the Congress surpassed the expectations and emerged as the single largest party with 206 seats as against 145 seats it had won in 2004. It backed the most number of 33 seats in Andhra Pradesh, followed by 21 in Uttar Pradesh, 20 in Rajasthan, 17 in Maharashtra, 13 in Kerala, 12 in Madhya Pradesh and 11 in Gujarat. The UPA comfortably won 261 seats, paving way for alliance to form the next government with the support of other parties. While the Congress improved its tally as compared to 2004 elections, the BJP's numbers dipped. From 138 in the past elections, the Saffron Party under Advani's leadership begged 116 seats. It won the most number of 19 seats in Karnataka, 12 in Bihar, 16 in Madhya Pradesh, 15 in Gujarat and 10 in Uttar Pradesh. Along with the BJP, the other partners took the NDA tally to 159. The third front, which was led by the Communist Party of India Marxist, bagged 78 seats. The other parties in the third front included Communist Party of India, the Revolutionary Socialist Party, the All India Anna Dravida Munitra Kazagam, that is AIA DMK, the Forward Bloc, the Janta Dal Secular, the Telangana Rashtra Samiti, the Telugu Desam Party, and the Bahujan Samaj Party. The Communist Party of India backed four Lok Sabha seats, one each in Orissa and Tamil Nadu, and two in West Bengal. The Communist Party of India Marxist secured 16 seats, nine in West Bengal, four in Kerala, two in Tripura, and one in Tamil Nadu. The Bahujan Samaj Party won 21 seats, two more than last elections. 
the AIA DMK won nine seats from all all from Tamil Nadu. The JDS backed three seats, the forward bloc and TRS two seats each. With the support of Samajwadi Party, three members of Janata Dal United, several independent members as well as the BSP, which was a part of Third Front, Singh take stock the came to form the government in 2009. He took oath as the Prime Minister of India, becoming the first since Jawaharlal Nehru to be re-elected after completing a full five-year term. The change is imminent and it was more than imminent in 2014 Lok Sabha election. Let us move on and find out more about the Lok Sabha elections of 2014. Lok Sabha elections of 2014 dawned in India with two successive terms of UPA government under Dr. Manmohan Singh, which saw more than half a dozen corruption scandals spill out from the closed closets. While Manmohan Singh is widely regarded to have been free from taint, his image of being silent in the face of these scandals and the possible inability to, have put, uh, to having prevented them put Congress firmly on back foot after 10 years of being in power. Political analysts and economists largely feel that UPA1 had a number of merit to its credit and had been able to put India in a strong position to handle the global economic crisis of 2008. The tenure of UPA2 reversed most of the goodwill earned in between 2004 and 2009. To brazenly claim that Manmohan Singh government did nothing right in years between 2004 and 2009 would possibly be incorrect. The Congress continues to claim that a number of its schemes were repacked by the successive government and that the UPA too had concentrated on keeping India's growth trajectory upwards, worked on providing jobs and given impetus to the infrastructure projects among others. The BJP, the lead opposition party, kept the pressure on UPA throughout its second term in power. Pinning its main attack on the shreds of the corruption scandal, breaking out into the public glare, BJP led a solid campaign targeted at hitting the image of Congress. The BJP, however, had internal changes adrift within its own ranks by 2013. Sushma Swaraj had already been named the leader of opposition in parliament after the Lok Sabha election in 2009 and in the subsequent years, the new need for a leader besides LK Advani was, felt, was being felt increasingly. There were also reported differences between the old guard and the new front within BJP consisting of Narendra Modi and Amit Shah. There was a convention in Goa to iron out the differences once Modi had already been named the campaign head of the party in 2013 for Lok Sabha next year. The main outcome was to stamp off approval for Modi and Shah to take the strategy of the party's electoral strategy. The eventual battle for power before the Lok Sabha election was spent by BJP on Modi's leadership and Shah's electoral acumen. The Lok Sabha election in 2014 was a massive turning point in India in ways more than one. The UPA had been at the helm of the governance for 10 years and its two tenures had left Congress red-faced and looking extremely vulnerable. Anti-incumbency was a, was a massive factor and so were the long list of scams and scandals that had eroded the image of party and the alliance. Then there was BJP which promised to fight a solid and dedicated campaign around Narendra Modi who was increasingly being seen as someone who could inject a powerful dose of life into the country's governance. Modi was not a completely unknown player in the national scene and had made news repeatedly as four-time CM of Gujarat. The battle lines were clearly drawn as Congress propelled Rahul Gandhi to lead its campaign with Manmohan Singh and Sonia Gandhi. Manmohan Singh would announce that he was not a candidate for the post of PM which led to the speculation that Rahul would replace him if the party won. Rahul for Congress and Modi for BJP painted contrasting images but both leaders began their campaigns in earnest. Lok Sabha elections 2014 was held in all 543 parliamentary elections in nine phases between April 7 and May 12. With more than 83 crore eligible voters, the election was the biggest ever anywhere in the world till that period in the time. The first time voters between the ages 18 to 21 accounted for 2.7% of all those eligible to vote. The electorate had to choose between 8,251 candidates who were trying their political fortunes, the largest number since the Lok Sabha election in 1996. Conducting elections of such enormous proportion meant huge challenge for the Election Commission of India, which once again rose to the occasion. The polling would be conducted in over 9.19 lakh booths across the country and special attention was given to ensuring the most of these were easily accessible, especially to differently abled and had facilities like shade, drinking water and required security cover to ensure fair and peaceful polling. 
In its 27-page manifesto, Congress pitched itself as the only choice. It spoke up of having handled the global economic crisis well for India under UPA's second term in office, of having worked for empowerment of marginalized and downtrodden, and of having increased food production from 213 million tons to 263 million tons since 2004, of rural development, and of working to working on eradicating poverty. The Congress manifesto also blasted the NDA governments of its past and squared quickly training guns on the BJP. The BJP's narrow and communal perspective denies equality to all. Theirs is an exclusionary doctrine the manifesto read. Congress then outlined its vision for India if it came to power once again, promising to take care of all sections of society, put special focus on women's safety and propel the Indian economy. The party also underlines its commitment toward transparent and accountable governance. The word corruption figured 15 times in the entire manifesto. The BJP manifesto, in contrast, was a near-perfect blend of attack against UPA as well as a solid plan of action for the com- country in the immediate future. The manifesto attacked UPA on the number of fronts like first one, governance of enactment, not action. Second, administration of entit- entitlement without delivery. Third, polity of promises, not performances. Four, economy of deficits. Fifth, work culture of delays and asset base of deficiency. Six, global synonym of corruption, scandal and stagnation. Slogans like Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas become, became the BJP's war cry. The party manifest, manifesto assured of more involved governance, development of all regions including Northeast, decentralization of power, priority to national interest, promoting digital India, boost to infrastructure, creating jobs, starting a skill India mission, stamping out corruption and bringing, black, bringing back black money. The manifesto also made special references to dealing with cross-border terrorism, exploring all possibilities within the constitutional framework to facilitate construction of Ram Temple in Ayodhya and housing for all by 2022. Social media outlets too were used more than ever before to reach out to the people. Narendra Modi led the campaign blip craze for the BJP and addressed a total of 437 big rallies and participated in 5,827 public events. In all, he travelled 3 lakh kilometres across 25 states in country. He would eventually opt to contest the election from Varanasi Lok Sabha constituency from where the party veteran Murli Manohar Joshi had won in 2009. Modi also contested from Vadodara. In contrast, Rahul Gandhi opted to once again contest from Gandhi family bastion of Amethi and he got down to campaigning at the time when Modi had already taken a sizable lead in reaching out to the people in the country. After hectic and often fierce campaigns and after nine phases of voting across 36 days, BJP emerged from the dust with one of the biggest mandates ever seen in the Indian recent electoral history. The party had managed to cruise past the majority on its own and secure 282 seats to become the first non-Congress party in the independent India to single-handedly cross the magic number required to form the government. While Modi himself won by the record margin in Varanasi from where Arvind Kejriwal of Ahmadbi party had sought to challenge him, the BJP almost swept Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand and completely swept Gujarat, Rajasthan, Uttarakhand and Delhi. The party's performance in the states which had traditionally never favoured it like West Bengal and Kerala was also heartening. While it won two seats in West Bengal, its voter share saw an upward swing in West Bengal and Kerala. A study by Delhi Center for Study of Developing Societies in immediate aftermath of the result also pointed to a marginal shift of Muslim vote towards BJP. Even if microscopic, this was quite significant. Most alliance partners under the NDA umbrella too performed con- commendably, with Shiv Sena winning 18 of the 20 seats it had fought in the elections in Maharashtra. The Lok Jan Shakti party won 6 of the 7 seats it contested in the Bihar. The Lok Sabha election in Andhra Pradesh was held concurrently with the state assembly election and this was the last time that the state voted as a whole. The election took place with the common knowledge that the state would be bifurcated into Andhra Pradesh and Telangana immediately after the result. Nonetheless, Telugu Desam Party, alliance member of NDA, secured 16 seats. With that, let us find out what happened in the most recent Lok Sabha elections, the Lok Sabha elections of 2019. Prime Minister Narendra Modi led his BJP to a supersized victory for a second term in the office as, he mess- as his message of nationalism, security, Hindu pride and a new India was wholeheartedly embraced by voters across large swaths of the country. He became the first non-Congress person 
to be the prime India's prime minister for two consecutive five-year terms. General Assembly elections were held in seven phases from 11th April to 19th May 2019. Around 912 million people were eligible to vote and voter turnout was over 67%, the highest ever, as well as the highest ever participation by the women voters. The Bharti Janata Party received 37.36% of the vote, the highest vote share by a political party since the 1989 general election and won 303 seats, further increasing its substantial majority. In addition, the BJP-led NDA, uh, NDA had won 353 seats. The Indian National Congress won 52 seats, failing to get 10% of the seats needed to claim the post of leader of opposition. Congress-led UPA won 91 seats. Other parties and their alliances won 98 seats. The opposition parties accused the NDA government of destroying the democratic institutions and processes. Modi denied these allegations and blamed Congress and Communists for undermining the institutions including the police, the CBI, the CAG and cited the murder of BJP activists in Kerala and Madhya Pradesh. The government is still functioning and hence one cannot, cannot evaluate the functioning completely before it completes the term. Hence we will have to wait till 2024 to analyze what and how did the government fare. With that we conclude the three episodes on the elections of India. I hope you would have found it informative and useful. In next episode, we will discuss a new theme that made a significant mark in post-independent India. With that, I would like to say to you, if you like our videos, do press the like button. If you have any questions, then do comment in the comment box and do subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Thank you.